John accidentally falls into the catacombs. He fell heavily on top of the mistress of the house. His lips stamped the mistress with a seal. The girl, who had been asleep for years, suddenly opened her eyes. John was startled. He kept backing away. He saw the girl sitting up slowly. John looked at her and panicked. The girl looked confused when she saw him. She rushed to her feet, aimed a sharp blade at John, thinking he was her enemy. Just then, a bearded man came out from the side. The bearded man also looked surprised. He hastened to tell the girl. The boy in front of her was not an enemy, but a hero who had lifted the seal. It turned out that the girl was a princess who had been asleep for a thousand years. Her country was attacked by the enemy. In a moment of crisis, the bearded man beside her used an ancient forbidden magic to see the kingdom. The princess was also put into a deep sleep. When a thousand years have passed, whoever touches the lips of the princess will wake her up. Looking at what was happening before his eyes, John was at a loss for words. He couldn't believe what was happening before his eyes. He had just been photographing the landscape in the woods, but suddenly he stumbled and fell into this underground chamber, and accidentally woke up a princess who had been asleep for a thousand years. John has become the hero who lifted the seal. He was a bit overwhelmed by what he saw now. He didn't want to stay here any longer. John took the opportunity to leave. But suddenly something touched behind him. When he turned around. The creature with its fangs was about to attack him. The princess pushed him aside at the critical moment. The bearded wizard began to chant. He unleashed his magic on the creature. The magic transformed into chains. The monster was tied up. The princess rushed to grab John. The three of them rushed out of the chamber. They managed to get out of it. The princess's name was Anna. She looked at John and crowned him a knight. The roar of the trolls came back around them. The trio continued to flee. The magician bearded told John. They lived in a medieval land of monsters. It was a land of magic. Anna also said that now that John had awakened himself, he had also won sealed everyone. The monstrous forces that attack the kingdom have also awakened. They need to hide. The princess who has been asleep for a thousand years is awakened. She feels hungry and gobbled up the roadside fruit to the dumbfounded eyes of the townspeople. John rushed to pay for her. He lied that Princess Anna was an actress. White, the court magician, looking at the motorbike riders and kids on skateboards, was surprised. He thought it was witchcraft. When they met the townspeople, Wyatt would shout out that the princess was here and told them to come to their knees. This made John feel helpless, but he couldn't leave them alone. John found Jack, the town's most knowledgeable man. He wanted to ask him what the hell was going on, but suddenly an armored knight came in, and without saying a word, he attacked the princess. The two men fought. The crowd thought they were putting on a show. Princess Anna was no match. The knight in armor put his sword to her chin. He then carried her away on his shoulders. Wyatt and John followed suit. Wyatt told John, now to get the princess back, because it was John who woke her up. If something happened to the princess, John would lose his life too. Wyatt took John back into the forest. They were found in an underground cave. The princess was now hanging from a rope. Beneath her feet was a cave. There were flames coming out of it. A fire-breathing dragon was trapped underneath. And the armored knight was a prince from a neighboring country. Country. The princess had been betrothed to him at a very young age by the king and queen. The magician Wyatt used the ancient forbidden spell. The prince was also sealed away for a thousand years. Now that he has awakened, he senses the location of the princess. That's why he brought her back, to make her marry him. If she didn't agree, he would throw her into the caves below, to be food for the fire-breathing dragons. John saw this, he rushed out, but against a medieval prince, he had no chance of winning, so he thought of a way, he told the prince. At the edge of town there was a place called the Man Tavern, in it lived several princesses more beautiful than Anna, and sure enough the prince was impressed by what he heard, and he thanked John for telling him the news, but what he didn't know was, when he entered the tavern, he would be attacked mercilessly. After the prince had gone, John and Wyatt rushed to save the princess. <coughs> and the princess thanked him. She decided to stay with John. Anna asked John to find a palace for her, a princess from a thousand years ago. They come to the modern world to buy a house. They saw a house, but the price was a bit high. But the princess didn't change her face when she heard it. She went straight back to the tomb, and took out a bag of gold coins, and bought the house. And then, as she wished, they had the house fortified. A symbol representing the family was installed. A watchtower was erected over the hut. A small moat was also dug, and so Anna lived there. But what they didn't know was that, danger was coming. Another medieval man came to the town. Man's instruments suddenly glowed with light. As the man plucked the strings a halo of light emanated. Those who heard the sound of the instrument, one by one, their minds were compelled. As the sound of the instrument began to move, the man began to play the instrument with greater intensity. The people in a few hundred meters heard it. Their bodies unconsciously followed the rhythm. Slowly, they began to move towards the man. When the man was very pleased with himself, the instrument in his hand suddenly flew in one direction. The man suddenly thought of something. They came out into the street. The wizard white spotted the man at once. He hurriedly told the princess and John to plug their ears, took them back to the house. Princess Anna told him a dangerous man had come here. He was Matt the Troubadour. He holds an instrument that can take over the mind. Anyone who hears it will be in his hands. With the lyre in his hand, 
Matt found the princess's house. When he saw the family crest on the house, a happy smile appeared on his face. Matt took control of the people, coming up to the house, and Anna and Wyatt took a defensive stance. There was a thud. The door slammed open. Everyone rushed in. Wyatt the wizard began to chant, trying to release his magic, but John accidentally broke his wand. Matt saw this and played the weird instrument again. People started to attack Anna. Anna faces a barrage of attacks. Her strength was failing her. They caught her. Matt told Anna to pass on the throne to himself, otherwise he would kill her. Princess Anna said, if you defeat the hero who has awakened me, then her throne will be his. As Matt looked around for the legendary hero, John came out awkwardly. Looking at John, Matt was a little surprised. I didn't expect the legendary hero who could awaken the princess. He looked so unimpressive, so he wanted to have a duel with John. He said it was up to John to decide what to fight. Looking at Matt's various blades, John knew, against a medieval knight, that he would be killed with one blow. He thought for a moment. He was prepared to play a game with him in the modern way. Whoever could get the water bottle to stand on the table would win. Matt scoffed at this idea. He agreed decisively, but Matt threw it from day to night. Not once did the bottle stand on the table. Matt felt angry and wanted to draw his blade. John John rushed to tell him. This was a rule that had been agreed upon. No one could go back on their word. There was no way out. Matt needed to be chivalrous. Now it's John's turn to throw the water bottle. He wasn't sure he could pull it off either. It's just a game he plays with his friends all the time. He's got a bit of a knack for it. John throws the bottle high into the air. The bottle landed on the table. And it stood firmly in place. And he did it in one go. This made Matt's jaw drop in amazement. An angry Matt. For a moment he couldn't control his emotions. He broke his instrument with his own hands. By the time he reacted, it was scattered all over the place. Then and everyone was back to normal. According to the rules of the knight's duel, the victor would punish the loser. John and the princess discussed the matter and Matt was banished, never to set foot on this land again. After Matt's departure, everyone rushed to repair the house, but suddenly they heard something. The three of them went into the living room. It sounded like the roar of a wild animal. Just as they were frightened and scared, a white dog came down the stairs. The white puppy's eyes turned dark red. It slowly turned into a monster with fangs. The three men looked at it and were horrified. They turned and ran. They went to the balcony and closed the door behind them. But the creature was blocking the doorway. It was about to come at them. Anna and John ran off the balcony. Wyatt stayed behind to take the lead. The monster burst through the door and bared its sharp teeth at him. The wizard fell from the balcony into a pile of leaves. Anna and John fled into the forest. Apparently the creature had also woken up from its seal. Behind them came the sound of its roar again. And sure enough, when they turned around, the creature was already behind them. Princess Anna saw this and drew her blade, ready to fight it. John looked at it, shouting at the top of his voice, tell it to sit under the house. A strange thing happened. The creature seemed to listen to John's words. It actually sat down. It had an expectant look on its face. John slowly bent down, picking up the fire extinguisher on the ground, and threw it into the air. And sure enough the creature was waiting. It leapt high into the air and bit it precisely. There was a thud. The fire extinguisher is bitten through. A cloud of dust is emitted. Anna sees this and tells John to keep running. They circled around, back inside the house. At that moment the forest was filled with the howling of monsters. Anna saw, the creature was calling for its companions. She told John, in the Middle Ages where they lived, this creature was called a guardian. It was a very dangerous creature. When they found people alone, they would come out in groups and attack, to prevent them from entering the house again. They have reinforced the house once again, and fortify it with fortifications, against the monsters of the Middle Ages. John was useless. Princess Anna brought back Prince Carter who had admired her, and gave him a small barn to live in, and let him stay with her, teaching John some basic self-defense skills. This was a great honor for Carter, but just then, Wyatt the wizard had discovered something new. The glowing spherical object. It burst into the wizard's ears. His eyes glowed with a golden light. A strange smile appeared on his face. The wizard was possessed. He looked at his body with delight. Though he felt a little clumsy. But it made him happy too. He walked into the house and smelt the smell of food. He grabbed a wheaten ring and poured it into his mouth. He found another bottle of jam and scooped a piece out with his hand. The sweet taste of it made him linger. He went back to the pet shop. He was looking for a feather. Then he saw another bottle of juice and drank it down. It was as if the sweetness was irresistible to him. After getting the feather, he dashed to the mall again again, and found a pool. He picked up a lot of wishing coins in it. Then he went back to the shop, and found a box of cheese. But as he was trying to find something else, he suddenly found the candy section. Looking at the colorful sweets, his mouth watered. He ran over to the shop and took a big bite out of it and put it in his clothes. The shop assistant looked at him in amazement. He ran out of the shop again. But the possession took too long. He suddenly fell to the ground with a black eye. Just then Anna and John caught up with him. They found Wyatt the wizard missing. They searched for him, and they found him. Anna saw right away that Wyatt was possessed. In the medieval forest, there were many fairies. Anyone passing through the forest who met them would be possessed, and they would become servants of the fairies forever. The way to banish the fairies required salt. So John, 
Under the direction of Anna, found a lot of salt. They poured the salt on Wyatt's body. Anna shouted for the fairies to get out. Suddenly two more glowing spheres came flying by. Anna was horrified. She told John to cover his ears, but it was too late. One sphere of light flew into John's ear. The other one went into Anna's body. Both of their eyes flashed with light. They were also possessed by a fairy and they were both behaving strangely. At at this moment the possessed white on the floor also woke up. He rushed to tell them. He had found what he needed to open the gate to fairyland. It was time to perform the ritual. The three of them were very happy. They formed a circle with stones, throwing in the items they had found one by one. A flash of light. The circle of stones opened a door to the fairy world. Just as they were about to jump in, a large net fell on the three of them. Carter appeared just in time. The door was about to close. They had to fly out of their bodies, into the closing door, and... <laughs> That and the others were back to normal. They looked at each other with their hearts still in their mouths. Had Carter not appeared in time, they would have been taken to the land of the fairies. But on the other side of the cave, an ugly old woman with a stooped body was preparing a potion.